Hey guys, welcome back. As you can see by my bright colors, I like bright colors. But today, it's raining. It's a brisk 45 degrees right now. I'm just gonna take you on what I got going today. And hopefully some of these people will pick up. Some of these guys need to pick up. Uh, so today, what I'd like to do is I got three cars coming in, all right? I got one oil leak, one oil leak that I know what's going on. We're doing the turbo oil feed pipe and the oil filter housing gasket. And then I got an oil change at 10 o'clock. This countryman right there, we're gonna do rear brakes, the license plate lights were malfunctioning or out, burned out. And then it also had the windshield washer pump was bad. I think there's all the hatch on the for the tailgate was messed up too so we're doing that I got the parts coming this morning reminds me I got to order some more parts but in the meantime I'm gonna get these cars out I'm gonna start putting together the cylinder head for the countryman that's been just dead and taking up space up there and my goal is to get the oil leak this countryman with the brakes and the cylinder head on today along with doing the oil change and anything else I can muster. So I don't mean ketchup either. So I got a busy day ahead. It's gonna be a long day, probably gonna work late tonight and uh, get going here. So I'll take you along for the adventure of a lifetime. All right, I know. It's just gonna be, you're just gonna see me moving like this. Warp speed. Anyway, all right, you'll see me going through the steps. All right, man, we'll see you next time. Okay, so as I mentioned in a previous video, and hopefully the sound's okay on this, and you're going to be able to see what I'm doing here. I can see my hands, so hopefully that works out. Um, so as I said in a, in a previous video, I'm going to show you how to do the Valvetronic on the N12, 16, and 18. Super easy. One thing I want to mention, though, is... I got the rags here so that uh, I don't scratch this surface. Guys at the machine shop, they did not resurface again. They said they, they put a gauge on it, looked good and, and level. So, I mean, you couldn't see the cracks. You know what I'm trying to say, right? Straight edge, they measured it, it was good. So they didn't resurface it. So I still want to be very careful with it. So I got the, the rags here. Also, it's got a lip right here. And what that's for is when I start pushing down, open the valves, they won't hit against the table, right? So the first thing I want to do is get the eccentric shaft in. And uh, you always want to lube all this stuff up. And where is my oil? I'll be right back. Yep. So just put a little bit of lube on there. You know, you don't have to, you could do a little bit. Uh, now I want my eccentric shaft. It's gonna roll right here. Right. There is one hole down here. We want to make sure we get. I believe it's this guy because it's got the little stopper here. The stopper goes in that little notch. So we get started here. You may see me do things, you know, that like right here, I started by hand. Sometimes I don't. I mean, I've been in this business 30 years, so I kind of know when something's straight I don't go full bore either you know I lightly will start something but this will get come back and get torqued at uh, 10 newton meters so see this guy it moves we're gonna put it all the way in the down position here 
So the rockers aren't so much, uh, what you call it, they're not being forced to push against the, the camshaft. Right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour some lube down or oil down in all the little lifter holes. And I mean, it's okay to get your head dirty like this. This is where the oil flows anyway. So, I mean, it may come out on the table, but I got rags there, so. Now what I'll do, and on these, you'll notice a difference here. The longer ones here always go for the intake. The shorter ones are for the exhaust. So just drop this down in and there's a little, little fork right here that sits over the valve. And I'll just go through and put all these in. And I'm not going to be switching back to warp speed or anything, so you can listen to my annoying voice. We got a car outside. I remember somebody called me last week. I mean, forgive me. I, I talk to a lot of people every week. I remember somebody was going to drop off their... I, they didn't even sound serious. And they said they were a previous customer, so I the car a car is here. Let's put it that way. A car is here, and uh, I don't have anything in my history, so hopefully somebody will call or stop by or something. I mean, if it stays too long, I didn't see any keys, so well, that's a little interesting fact for the day. One of the things I got going on. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, it's probably going to be a nice little long day. Don't worry, I'm going to go as fast as I can. <laughs> I got, I'm going to have two, I'm going to have all my racks tied up. So, that's not good, because even if you got to bring somebody in just to look at something, you're like, uh, you're actually pushing the car off. You don't want to do that. Believe me, I'm tired of pushing these cars around. My neighbors are, are very gracious though. I got one in the parking lot. I'll ask them and they'll help me push it in. Because there's a little hill. And one person, if you got a straight on shot, one person can do it. I know because I've done it. And but if you gotta move it anywhere, you get tired real quick. But when it's on the you know shop floor i can push around by myself so all right next part we're going to do we got the eccentric shaft in we got the the rockers on everything's in place they don't move side to side they're on there where they should be now we're going to put these i believe they call them an intermediate lever you know I'm just going to set these guys on where they should go and like I said, I, I've seen people take this whole assembly apart, every nut and bolt. I don't know why. I mean, you can. Obviously, people do it, but why waste the time? And this is my opinion. You know, I'm sure there's some purist out there that says, Oh, you got to do this for this reason. Like I said in the previous videos, I really don't care because I know it works. And even though I am doing this job twice, it's not for this reason. <laughs> Give me a break. All right. So now I got my assembly here, right? Everything. The only thing I don't have is the, the springs and the correct position. I got all the bolts hanging through and everything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through. I'm going to line everything up. Right? And everything should just kind of fall in place there we go everything's just like sitting there I remember we don't have a lot of tension on this stuff yet we're not looks like all the back here are flush I'm just gonna go through with my gun 
lightly very lightly just get them started just so they go down I'm not trying to cross thread stuff I'm not trying to get it to go tight just want them started you know maybe five or six threads that way they're not gonna pull out the, the threads on the head and now what I'm gonna do is make sure see the thing is so flipping bright see these guys there's a groove right here they these guys need to be sitting in the intermediate levers right I know the, the, the camera it's tough but you want to make sure all those are in the groove right there so you just want to eyeball it right they're in the groove and they're sitting on the rocker they're in the groove sitting on the rocker in the groove sitting on the rocker all right And I'm gonna go back through. Same thing with the top. So see how that popped? Still in the groove though, still in the groove. So now I'm gonna go through and put some tension on it, all right? It's just drawing it down. I'm not going hog wild, I'm just slowly bringing the pressure down. Because what's this going to do is it can't start opening the valves and all that spring pressure. Hear that? It started opening the valves, it wasn't in the groove. Thing, thing shape, shift and adjust. I mean, imagine this thing's coming down and it's kind of walking back and forth so you can... That one's a little tight, but that might be... It's on its opening. You know what I mean? Like where it is on the camshaft. Yeah, look, the lobe of the camshaft, it's right on it. So, now I'm just putting a little rat tat tat on it. And this isn't torque, this is just a little rat tat tat. You want to go back through and make sure you can move those those levers. Hear that? Okay. So now that that's on and pretty much down all the way, everything looks like it's in position. Ah, crapola! Good going, Ben. I got this one right here. Can you see it? I'm sorry, because of the glare, it's hard to see. But right here, and if you saw it, it's underneath the camshaft. So guess what? I get to take it off. This is this is real life stuff, right? Not edited for television. I'm just gonna loosen this bad boy up. This one is actually the hardest one to do because it's so close to the side. Let me get my special tool. All right, here we go. I believe they call this a panel popper. It's got like a little snake's tongue here. And I just put the, the spring in the groove and you can move it around. So I already got it out of the way. 
And now with it loose, I'm gonna push this thing back behind and put it in. That may be a way to do it from now on, honestly. Just leave that one loose. So, it's now in position. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing here. See how this is like straight, and this one's all bending out? Because now, I've put it down in there, and it's in the, in the fork. So now that that's happening, I'm gonna tighten it back up, all right? And then I'll just walk, walk them down. I've had this happen a lot worse, and it was not that easy to fix. So either I'm learning something in my, in my age of doing this, or it just went good this time. Okay. So all I'm going to do, like I say, I'm going to take this, put this panel popper tool in, get that spring, and push down and around into the spot and this one just fell in same with this one go down put it in boom see how easy that is down around boom down around boom come on man you tell me it's harder than this all right i'm gonna go to number four ah come on You're stuck just trying to get him down around boom down around boom down around boom and we're done and it's set up all i gotta do now is torque the the bolts the 10 newton meters i'm gonna go back through make sure the intermediate shafts are or what you call it in their grooves and sitting on the rocker want to make sure the rocker again is sitting on the valve valve stem so i'm going to do that but that's basically the process i mean like i said i've seen videos where they're taking everything apart the springs then they're making special tools, devices, and stuff. And that's cool. But why? <laughs> why? I, I, I don't know. And maybe people didn't know this. I mean, honestly, when I went to school, quote unquote, they got this special tool. And a funny little joke that we used to say is that BMW, who makes many, is a special tools company that sells cars. And why is that funny? Because they have more special tools than they do cars. <laughs> It's a special tool for everything and they have a special tool and you can do all this stuff but as you saw i just did it right now i don't know how long this took me maybe 10 minutes maybe more maybe less uh i don't know but this is the way i've i've done it and i can't even take credit for it one of my employees showed me this so but we've been doing it like this for years so all right i'm gonna finish assembling this by that time uh customer should come in and I'll be on to the next thing so like I said I'm just trying to get this built so after I'm done with the day today's work <laughs> I can jump on that and get that thing done today because I gotta get out of here I got I need two lifts you know going up and down so I'll put you on warp speed for this until until they come You want to rotate the camshafts because I've seen where people put these on backwards it's actually only goes on one way so by rotating if it, the camshaft is jammed and you can't move it back and forth freely then one of the caps or all the caps are backwards so I usually once everything's tight should be easily able to move both camshafts I mean this one we didn't even take apart so that shouldn't be a problem with this one another thing I like to mention is you can always tell who's taking care of their car because as you see how black and nasty and grubby these things are you know this is this color here it's not clean like this nice clean aluminum that we have right 
So that means people aren't changing their oil or it's go getting low on oil and it's cooking the oil and the oil's now bonding to the to the engine pieces, which isn't good, right? I mean, it's the cheapest thing in the world to do is to change your oil. But just look, look at how gross and dark and black it is. So you go to my Instagram page, you'll see some couple cylinder heads that look like this. Nice and shiny with over 250,000 miles on it, you know? And why? Because they're taking care of it. So, all right, gonna put you back to time warp and continue to finish this head. I had the customer come in for the oil filter housing gasket. I'm waiting to, to start that until after the oil change at 10 o'clock comes in because I only got one rack right now. So like I said, it's gonna be a busy day, probably a late day. So put you back on time warp. car you see me bring in is going to be the, the oil filter housing gasket i want to time myself so we'll see how fast that goes i'm gonna put you on pause for right now and we are back this one we're doing the oil filter housing gasket on and the turbo oil feed pipe it's got a leak from below so i'm just gonna double make sure on that one and then start ripping it apart so i'm going to time myself see how fast i can do this we're going to go with the the phone clock we're going to call it two o'clock because i ain't going to start exactly right there so we'll call it two 159 i'm sure i'll be distracted sometime within this and we'll go from there all right here we go
boys and girls. Welcome back to another episode of Angry Bang. I typically don't use, I use the drain pan. It's got a bigger base than this little thing I got going here. But I spilled it all over the floor. I wasn't angry all day today, but now I am. Uh, and it could have been prevented, but I got this catch over there. You probably can't even see it. It's like, right, you just see it top right where my finger is, right? About like that. And it was too much, and I was right there, so you get another episode of Angry Ben. So I'll clean this up, of course. And I got the, uh, the oil filter housing off. All I gotta do is do the oil feed pipe. It definitely looks like it was leaking from the oil filter housing gasket. So I'm like halfway there. Oh, and I got the phone. So it's been about 40 minutes since that, since I started. But I'm gonna stop now because I'm gonna clean up and this really isn't part of the, part of the game is cleaning up. I mean, it is, but afterwards, you know. Ah, oh, jeez. Anyway, all right. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm sorry. I was angry, Ben, and I did that oil filter housing gasket and turbo oil feed pipe. And here it is, the end of the day. And uh, yeah. So I'm making this video, a portion of this is going to go to the collection, to say I'm sorry I didn't do that. I'm a little tired. I thought I was going to work late to, but to work another three hours at this garbage. I don't think so. Um, yeah, it'll be another day tomorrow, right? There, there's days coming right after the other one. It's like what Seinfeld say about appetites. Oh, if I ruin this one, there's one coming right after it. So I think I'm going to uh, call it a day and uh, start cracking hard tomorrow. I didn't even get that cylinder head on, you know, all day. I mean, I did get three cars out, so I guess that's saying something, but it's still at the same time. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thanks again for joining, and we'll see you next time.